Hello and welcome to Retech and today we're going to cover an event. The event was at the Retro Computing Museum and it was um, quite good. It was another one of their legendary meetups. So we're just going to have a quick walk through that event um, and just let you know how it's going. And then in part two we're going to launch into the Commodore Amiga 600 again. Now this Amiga is an Amiga I'm going to max out as much as possible because if you have a quick look at this video, this little clip from this video rather, from um, our program on using the Amiga 600 as a MIDI system, as a MIDI recorder, a MIDI sequencer, you'll have probably noticed that it kind of runs out of memory quite quickly. This thing can do, okay, so I've just set the keyboard up slightly differently and we're going to just do a little bit of a track. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade this Amiga as far as I can go with it. Not so much in the um, CPU stakes because for what I need it for it's almost certainly good enough. And um, so first we're going to have a look at the RCM. Okay so it's early morning they're just setting up for the um, legendary meet at the Retro Computer Museum in Leicester. And you can see Mark is having a, a quick wander around before the um, public and all of the ticket holders come in. We're getting ready for th um, refreshments and bars and drinks and also checking out the arcade area which there's two massive rooms of arcade machines and they're all free to use. Once you're in the museum, there's not really anything else apart from food or drink that you really need to kind of spend out on, which is brilliant. And it's a great day out for anybody who's interested in technology as well as the whole family because there's plenty to do. And here's everyone starting to kind of turn up and check out the arcade machines and basically have a play. And that's what it's all about. There's also a massive library of books and there's also a huge library of software and also a restroom and a chill out room and as you can see people are now starting to come in now this is the Sam Coupe and it's um, a, a gentleman called Colin and he produces some amazing add-ons for the Sam Coupe including a board that would allow you to play Commodore 64 SID music and basically it's an, a SID chip which runs with a Sam Coupe and it's absolutely amazing to use. So as we kind of start opening the doors for the public you can see Andy's still getting ready with um, gifts and trays and this is the man with the eye at the end of his fingers Commodore Amiga that he actually made the cartoon on which is going to be released very shortly and I believe there's a book to follow and it's an amazingly relaxed atmosphere it's more like a club a social get-together um, and as you can see as more and more people come in through the day who purchase tickets for this event it's starting to get a little bit busier now and it will throughout the morning and I'm amazed the weather and the storms didn't put people off because I know a lot of people stayed overnight to make sure they actually got here for the event during the day and as you can see people are starting to grab refreshments, chill out, chat and as the day progresses the bar starts to open and people can get a little bit more of an adult orientated refreshment obviously not the children but you know as you can see it's a fantastic atmosphere in here everyone's enjoying the space the time not just chatting about computers and classic machines but just everything in general 
it's a family affair it's a family thing so if you're in the area and you want to do something a little different or chill out with like-minded people or just check out what it was like 20 30 and 40 years ago then this is the place to come along and to be so just going to finish now and it was a fantastic day everybody enjoyed it everybody was so relaxed and it made a great great day and these events are something that most people who are interested in this kind of thing really should be thinking about going to at least once or twice a year so another fantastic event by Andy and the team at RCM okay so I hope you enjoyed that quick kind of run through of the events of the day it was another great meet at the um, Retro Computer Museum in Leicester and it was a fantastic day albeit we know the weather caused a few issues for people getting there and some people actually came down a day early and stayed overnight because of it and as you might hear now every now and again on the mic you can pick up some very very high wind sounds and that's because it is very very windy the, um, it's one of the biggest storms the UK's had in a long time and one of the biggest storms that parts of Europe has had in a long time we've had back-to-back -back storms of winds up to 122 miles an hour so um, if you can hear the wind in the background well there's not really a lot I can do about that but it gives you an idea that you know we do these things live and um, we still try and get the content out to you. Today we're going to talk about the Amiga 600 and the 600 as you can see in this previous video was used for a MIDI controller. It's a great little MIDI system and the ideal thing with this machine it's very small I mean you know it doesn't take up a massive amount of desk space when you start plugging in keyboards and MIDI devices and interfaces etc so kind of reduced footprint works really well and uh, the more I use the 600 the more I actually like it I was kind of a little bit more against it when they were current because I had a 500 plus and my brother actually had a an Amiga 600 before we moved on to 1200s and MPCs and so on but um, I always thought it was kind of a, a bit of a lost cousin but it's actually more useful now than it was then and the other thing was this could be carried to um, computer shows conventions swap parties and all this in a backpack where the uh, the 500 plus was a bit big for that and so it had its advantages but we're going to max this thing out to where I need it maxed out and that's in the memory stakes and I'm also going to upgrade it with a hard drive and also we're going to bung a lot of software on it and upgrade the the system the ROMs on board as well so we're going to have a quick look at that so let's take a look at how we maxed out and upgraded this machine and what the results were so we have a 600 stripped down to its board and as you can see it's just fairly standard. I've taken out the extra memory and basically cleaned the board up. Uh, the keyboard's standard, the rest of the machine standard as you can see here. Okay and this is the module that's going to go into the machine. This is the extra 9.5 meg of memory that's going into this machine and when you couple it with the internal memory of one and a half you should have 11 meg on board we're also going to install the Amiga Forever ROM and that will bring it a little bit more up to date and we're also going to install a hard drive a hard drive onto the board as well because this is a basic machine this always has been a basic machine without a hard drive and as you can see we've just popped the memory in place and the keyboard's also there so we can get it running so the next job we have to do is to install these two upgrades the Amiga Forever ROM and also the memory upgrade which should be fairly straightforward also we're going to upgrade the hard drive or install the CF card hard drive into the Amiga all you do is you just pop in the ROM replace the original and you get the 3.1 ROM installed 
the memory is already in place and we just test the machine to make sure it all powers up the way it should do. You should really only do this a stage at a time. Next it's the actual extra memory and it's a clip over processor type. So basically it's designed to clip over We're using that little window there to secure it to the board as you can see here. Now really all you need to do is firmly push it into place and it should snap down. It sounds rougher than it really is but it should snap down quite tightly. And then again check that it works. Always do it in stages. Make sure that one upgrade works before you move on to the other. The next is the workbench upgrade on the CF card using the IDE interface and an IDE converter. So basically all it has to do is plug in onto the IDE pins here as shown and have a quick check underneath because there are some metal parts on here which are not very good if you decide to touch them against the processor, an IC or another component on the board. Because you don't use the tray, it needs to be secured somehow, um, otherwise it's just going to flop around inside the case, which is never a good thing. And as you can see, it's quite flexible. So the, the way I do it is that I actually use a little bit of double sided tape because as you can see the tray is not going to fit. Now once you know that the, car, the hard drive or the CF card is in place you can now power the machine on to make sure that everything works the way it should. Again stages so you eliminate issues by doing too many upgrades at once. My next option is to put some tape on the back, double sided tape, so it can't short out on the board and it can't cause issues. And then once it's in place it will actually secure itself to the board itself and stop it moving around so much. Then all you need to do is pop the machine back together so you have another machine that looks like a Commodore Amiga or a stock Commodore Amiga. So as you can see this machine's had a lot of work done to it now. It's um, got a hard drive and a CF card. It's got um, a, a lot of memory in comparison to what it did have a 9.5 meg plus the one and a half on board memory. So you got roughly 11 meg of memory on board on this machine now. And it does make a bit of a difference especially for MIDI sequencing and um, it's it's something I actually like. I like using this machine as a sequencer. I was a big ST fan and I still am for MIDI stuff but I'm kind of warming a little bit to this little machine now. So that's what this Amiga now sits at. Now why don't I go out and get a 1200? Well I've had 1200s. I've given them away in the past and um, I don't or didn't see any difference between using this as a MIDI sequencer than using the 1200 as a MIDI machine either. So um, the 1200 was also a lot larger and the 1200 was um, also a lot more temperamental because I had the ESCOM variant at the time. So the ESCOM variant had an issue with its floppy drive and it had a fair number of quality issues. I mean the machine was fine for what I used it for, for you know games and graphics and all that kind of thing but you know it was causing issues with some software as well. It also had issues with older software that you could run on the 500 plus the 500 and it had very similar issues to the 6 but the 6 didn't have the same kind of issues with its drive etc so you know that's why I'm not really that worried about upgrading this for what I use it for to another 1200 I mean I'm probably going to get another 1200 at some point but I've got 500s 600, 5 pluses, I've got the original what they call chicken lips 500 as well. Um, I've got them upgraded in various shapes and forms and guises and I don't necessarily see a need to go to a 1200 to do what I'm doing. I'm quite happy with the 6 and you know what I think a lot of people will be quite happy with the 600 as well.
Now, the upgrades make sense to me. The upgrades work for me, but I'm guessing a lot of people would go down the route of, you know, speeding it up, using a Pi, etc., and all this kind of thing to boost the processor and the performance of it. But I'm kind of trying to keep this one in the same vein as it was when it was new. So I'm not doing too much to it. Now, the CF card upgrade was fantastic, but I do have another 600. Uh, which is actually a parts bin at the moment. It's got broken keyboard and all that kind of stuff. But the the motherboard on it um, has an issue, and it's not an issue with the board itself. It's not a specific issue. It is a issue where it won't accept hard drives. You see, I have an original hard drive for this, and also the CF card, and they both work perfectly. I also have the other board and I've tried the original hard drive in, tried installing it with the correct software etc and getting it to run and partition it and so on and it just won't see it. It also does the same with CF cards. Now from memory there was a problem with some of the Amiga 600s that came out that literally wouldn't upgrade to a hard drive. and. Um, I believe at the time a lot of the boards were being swapped out under warranty and um, it actually happened to my brother 600 he had to come out and get the board swapped so he could run a hard drive because he just wouldn't accept it at all so be very careful there are a handful or more than a handful of 600s out there that do have issues having hard drives installed in them so you know it's not a fault of whoever's selling them it's not a fault of the seller maybe they didn't know they never had a reason to upgrade it the hard drive they just ran the games and so on on it from disk so you know if you really want one with a hard drive already in it the probably the best route is for you to go and get one with a hard drive already in it if that's what you're looking for so then you know it's going to work straight off the bat but other than those little niggles that they had with the 600, I'm quite happy with it, and it's a great little machine. I'm also very happy with its performance as a MIDI machine, and also in this video, I'm very, very happy with um, the way it turned out for RCM, because it could have been a bit of a disaster, because we had up to 122 mile an hour winds the previous day, but in the end, the event was fantastic, it was friendly, everyone did their piece, and it was a great day out. So if you are in the UK, or visiting the UK and you're in and around the area of Leicester and Leicestershire then go and you know make your way there and meet Andy and the gang and have a have a great time okay so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again soon so thanks a lot and I'll see you again thank you